Hello, termites. It's Tuesday and you know what that means. The bar is open. What am I drinking? Well, for you people on a budget, here's a nice little tip. This is called Bluebird Pinot Noir. I enjoy a Pinot Noir because it's not heavy and then there's less of a hangover. If you'd like good wines, you should call Louis Black and he can tell you all about very expensive, crazy wines. This is about $16. And um, here's another good thing. You can travel with it, because why? Well, the top screws off. There's no need for wine openers and all that trouble and running back down to the front desk and lying about what you're doing. Anyway, that's what I'm drinking. It's been a fun week. I had the Grand Termite here. Ron White was here for a little bit. And then I did a little golfing for my birthday. And, um, I like to bring you guys stuff I see on the road. Found this for my gas station junk food thing. Ready? Here's a little tip too. Do you ever go into Love's gas stations? They have breakfast tacos all day and after like one o'clock, they're half price. And they're still delicious. It's for the truckers. But this I found, which my mother will love, pumpkin spice Twinkies. I'm not really a big pumpkin pie person. I really only want the, um, the crust and the whipped cream. I could do without the pumpkin part of it. Um, but these do kind of look good. And it's a limited edition. And I did not know, I looked on the back, Hostess is made Kansas City. How did I not know that? I should know that as a Missouri person. And it's Kansas City Mo, not Kansas City Kansas. Still more of a ding dong person, but there you go. Here's another little junk food I found. And I won't say where, because I'm not supposed to shop there. I was in Walmart, and I know, I don't like Walmart. I try to never go to Walmart, but there was a piece of a thing I needed for the boat, and it, Walmart had it. And then I was walking down the aisle, and I was thinking my friend Mike Gaffney or the East Coast Comics, because all they'll drink is Dunkin' Donuts coffee, you know, man? And I, he did introduce me to some that I liked, but I'm more of a gas station coffee lady. But anyway, they have Dunkin' Donuts cereal. Did you guys know this? Yeah, they do. How high do you think you'd be after a bowl of this? And how quickly will the come down be? Five minutes till you need a nap after you eat this? You'll be zooming. You could probably do a lot around the house for like five minutes. Caramel macchiato cereal. Wow. There was more too. I didn't buy more boxes because I don't really know if I'll eat it. But it does look good. Doesn't look like anything's natural or normal, which is right up my alley. It's all made up. It's just fake food. I'm gonna put this down here. So there you go. I'm not saying shop at Walmart because I don't think they pay people right and I don't think they act right. <laughs> but if there's nowhere else to go, I don't know, maybe you can find it online. The Twinkies are everywhere. And then here is a little piece of information about, you know, fast food, junk food, the things I like to talk about. It just, it made my decade. It was a wonderful little birthday present. Um, this is the headline, and I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. Ireland court rules that Subway sandwich bread is not legally bread. I couldn't agree more. Every time somebody says go to Subway, I'm like, what? That bread, it's like spongy. It's not bread. I don't know what it is, in my opinion. I don't want to get sued by Subway. Um, but there's a lot better out there. Jersey Mike's, people that were the bread, so this is what, this is Ireland's Supreme Court. This is where this went to. This is where this argument landed. I'm just gonna say, good for them. Ireland's Supreme Court has issued a ruling declaring that for tax, for purposes of tax law, the bread served on Subway's hot sandwiches does not actually meet the legal definition of bread because of its sugar content and is rather a confectionery or fancy baked good. I don't think it's fancy. I think it tastes like I took three of the sponges that I have under my sink, and then I put <laughs> shitty turkey in between it, and then I ate the bread anyway, even though I didn't like it. The case was brought before the court by Subway Franchise Book Finders LTD, which claimed that the bread serv Subway served was qualified as a staple food, which in Ireland means Guinness. I made that up. In Ireland, 
Staple food means that the bread would be exempt from value-added tax, the VAT tax, thereby saving Subway money. Yeah, I know the VAT tax, because now they give you cards when you buy stuff in Europe. And then you get your tax, the tax you paid, you get it back when you leave, and now it's all on a credit card. It's so much easier, and they used to make you fill out forms for all that, even if you just bought junk at a junk store. The ruling, which was handed down on September 29th by the five-judge Irish Supreme Court, said that the bread sugar content, which is five times higher than what was set out in Ireland's Value Added Tax Act of 1972, is too sugary to meet the legal definition of bread and therefore cannot be called a staple food. Well, yeah, I don't, does it, it, I don't even know if it's too sugary. I don't know what is the matter with it, but to me, it doesn't, it, you don't bite into it like bread. Maybe it's because my teeth don't meet correctly either, but when I bite it, it's like pulling, like a dog. I'm like pulling on a couch thing. The argument depends on the acceptance of the prior contention that the Subway heated sandwich, which contains bread as defined and therefore can be said to be food for the purposes of the second schedule rather than confectionery. Since that argument has been rejected, the subsidiary argument must fail. The court distinguished in its official judgment. According to the uh, value added tax of 1972, the sugar allowed in bread product must not be more than 2% of the total weight of the flour in the dough. Well, maybe here's where we're going off track. Flour versus sugar ratio. Subway's dole across, dough across all of their bread options as listed by the nutritional information on their website, white bread, Italian, nine grain wheat, honey oat, Italian herb, and cheese, nine grain multi-seed, and hearty Italian all contain about 10% sugar. According to The Independent in Ireland, the case froze, first arose by book finders from a 2006 decision by the revenue commissioners which refused to give them a VAT Refund for VAT payments made early between 2004 and late 2005. Bookfinders claimed it was entitled to a refund on the grounds that the VAT should have been zero because it qualified as a staple food. See, and they're saying, no, it doesn't. So it doesn't even count as lunch. That's what the Irish are saying. They haven't defined what it is because they probably don't fucking know either. They just got to decide, is it bread? I'm really happy somebody agrees with me. Justice Donald O'Donnell... That's really his name, Donald O'Donnell. And the Irish Supreme Court ruling said that the definition of bread was originally established to make a distinction between the starch in other baked goods like cookies or cake or brownies. Yeah, that are sugary and therefore not healthy enough to be considered essential foods. Subway says, Subway's bread is, of course, bread. Subway said in a statement given to ABC News, we've been baking fresh bread in our stores for more than three decades and our guests return each day for sandwiches made on the bread that smells as good as it tastes. Just because you bake something in your store doesn't mean it is what you said. Like I say, if I tried to make my mom's chocolate cake, let's say, I could say I made it, but what would result, I don't know that that's cake because I'm not doing it properly. You, you could call it fudge. I don't know, but I'm really happy that the Irish have finally sided with me on. You can leave comments. You like Subway? You like their bread? I don't. I don't even like their turkey. I won't even go into sprouts. I don't even understand the purpose of those. It's just filler shit, right? Well, in, in more happy news, ready for this one? Because who, we didn't start the show with my Dolly quote. I forgot. I worked hard to pick this one out. This is what she says regarding her successful career. But you gotta say it like that. I had to get rich so I could afford to sing like I was poor again. Ha <laughs> ha! Love it. Just when I say that my idols, minus Cher, Cher's mouthy, we all know that. And I like that about Cher, but Stevie and Dolly don't really say much, usually. Whew, but they things are happening. Netflix announces a Dolly Parton Christmas movie that will hit the site soon. A new Dolly Parton Christmas special is headed to Netflix. The streaming giant will release Dolly Parton's Christmas on the square on November 22nd, so we don't even have to wait till Christmas. This is so exciting. She's going to be in it. It stars Dolly Parton, Christine Baranski, Jennifer Lewis, Treat Williams, and Jeannie Mason. The movie follows a rich woman named Regina who tries to sell her father's 
land develop to sell her father's land, something developer got cut off. However, she has a change of heart after meeting her guardian angel, which leads Regina to rekindle her connections between her hometown. The special will feature 14 original songs by Dolly Parton. And that goes in conjunction with what? Dolly's releasing her first holiday album in 30 years. How is that possible? People who shouldn't have Christmas albums do that. Have you ever heard Candlebox? No, they don't have a Christmas album. I make that, made that up. Johnny Mathis does, and I can guarantee you that because my, my parents make me listen to it every Christmas. It plays right after the Irish tenors. Then we listen to Johnny Mathis. And then you go on, and you know what? There's a lot of people that have them that shouldn't. I'm not going to go into it now. I'll wait till Christmas time. I really like Sarah McLaughlin's. Anyway, Dolly, I can't believe she never did it. Especially with, you know, Jesus and Christian-y things happening. The record, which is set to release on October 2nd, it, oh my God, yeah, is Dolly's first holiday-themed album in years. Oh, in years, so maybe she did. I think I'll call it a Holly Dolly Christmas because I love the song Holly Dolly Christmas with Burl Lives. He used to be on all my Christmas specials throughout the years, pop, pop, top billboard. I think of him as Mr. Christmas. I also thought, why don't I do something cute or clever, like deck the halls with bows of dolly, something like that. It also features Michael Bublé. That'll make my friend Lorene's mom really happy. Billy Ray Cyrus, Miley Cyrus, Jimmy Fallon, and Willie Nelson. Really? Wow, Willie's going to do it. I figured everybody, since everybody probably wouldn't get to celebrate Christmas as usual this year, I want to be creative instead of sitting around the house this summer. So I put on my mask, gloves, and practice social distances as well as... Got the musicians to get singers and put the work together and that's the best work I've ever done. Well, I'll raise my glass to that. A movie and an album. What a fall. Melania Trump said, who cares about Christmas stuff? I think it was actually who fucking cares about Christmas stuff. And normally I would say that's pretty funny, except I have a deer that lights up from Lowe's. It's a buck. And it's so realistic looking. The other deer, the alive ones, knock it over every night. Gotta say, I kind of love it. In other breaking news, it's not really a big deal, but it's interesting. The XFL returns. New ownership and a new plan. How many of these are we going to go through? I just don't know. League co- See, it started again, and then I don't even know what happened. All I know is I bought a St. Louis Battlehawk t-shirt and it arrived and they told me we're not doing that anymore. And I was like, well, won't I look like a jackass in my stupid Battlehawk t-shirt? But that was like, I don't know, a year ago that happened. League owner Dwayne The Rock Johnson announced Thursday that the spring professional leave will be back after a one-year hiatus as owners were proud to our... We're proud to champion our XFL players, coaches, cities, fans are terrified. It's an uphill battle, but we're hungry and humble and no one will outwork us. They, the XL, they haven't identified where the teams will play. However, the video attached to Johnson's tweet shows images of New York and Washington when mentioning the term cities. However, who performed best at the box office? St. Louis and Seattle. But see, they won't show us because we're not cool in their mind. Well, Seattle might be, but I don't really know what they, they get one shot of the arch and they leave. On TV, the XFL started strong and gradually declined. That's because other sports started. Every, anybody could take that gap between the Super Bowl and March Madness. You know, the pandemic prevented an apples to apples ratings comparison between the XFL and the NAACB basketball tournament. Still, most states legalize betting on sports. The demand will increase for sports on which to bet. By 2022, more states inevitably be will allow to wager on sports, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, the uh, XFL can work. Yeah, I think it'll work. I don't, I don't love it. I like the um, Grey Cup. You ever seen Canada's Grey Cup? You know why? Because it's like watching a super duper high school game in America. Not even a college game. They're the one stadium, I think it was Calgary's, wherever they played, it wasn't even enclosed on the ends. Like there weren't even seats on the ends. It was just two giant bleachers. It'd be like the most awesome 
But they had a wonderful halftime show a couple years ago. Shania Twain came out on a dog sled and it was snowing. I mean, you want to talk about authentic. Wow. Here's the names too. The, these are the names. Of, there's only eight teams. The DC Defenders. Meh. Uh, I can't read that. The something Guardians. Oh, the New York Guardians. It's too small to read. Tampa Bay Vipers. It's pretty good. LA Wildcats. Nah. Houston Roughnecks. Aren't there already Roughnecks in Canada? Or is rough, it? Rough Riders. Rough riders. Yeah. Okay. Saskatchewan. Paddles. Seattle Dragons. Bah, like it. Dallas Renegades. Nah. St. Louis Battlehawks. Love it. And then there's just more shit about the XFL, but if you guys are interested in that, it's coming back. What is that one? Dallas, Houston, 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 who did I not read? Yeah, New York Guardians. Okay, I got that. Okay. So, I think you guys have gathered by now I'm a lake person versus the ocean. I have lived on the ocean. I don't understand it. I learned how to surf. I quit when I saw a shark. That was the end. That's how it works. This is fun. This is fun. Oh, no, it's not. That's not fun. That thing could eat me. I have an argument um, sometimes with my sister-in-law. She's a Philly Jersey Shore person, likes the ocean better. I get both arguments, but I will stand by the fact there are more things in the ocean that can harm you slash kill you than in a lake. Like there's a lake here in, in, in Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, and there's a lake in Tennessee. I go to both of them a lot. Now, neither they're the most singular thing is a, a, a poisonous snake, maybe, but usually in the back of coves, and occasionally a snapping turtle. Most you're gonna lose a digit. Not that big of a deal, really, right? Unless it's your thumbs. My dad was a workman's comp attorney. I know exactly how much every finger's worth. Your thumb is the most valuable, by the way. Um, but then when I think that, and I am old enough to, how did I fucking not know this? This just blew, this just blew my mind. Massive 14-foot alligator killed after 800-pound beast dragged terrified hunter's boat around an Arkansas lake for two hours. Now, Arkansas is a state below my state. What do you mean there's alligators in the state below my state? What the fuck? I've gotten in Arkansas lakes. It never even entered my mind that there might be an alligator. And then they say, well, I looked it all up. Well, it's really in the third lower part of the state. Well, then I looked up this lake where this 14 foot, 800 pound alligator was living. Mm, I don't think it's in the bottom third. I'd say about halfway. And then if you go with my global warming thing about armadillos on the move, how long till Fatty here decides he, maybe, he'd like it to, maybe he'd like to go up somewhere just a little cooler in the summer and he walks to Missouri. They can walk from pond to pond, they do it at night. You know, they eat one another too if they're hungry enough. They dominate ponds and areas and they're cannibals. I don't know, does that apply to alligators? Alligators, gibbles. Get a load of this though. Travis Bearden and his father brought, uh, and his father, brother Cody and t friend Tommy Kelly had a permit to hunt alligators on, on Lake Marisak when they encountered the beast around 11 p.m. So they're out at night in a boat that does not probably, maybe I'd say 16 feet. That'd be my guess. So two feet longer than the alligator, maybe not even. Travis, 31, said he spotted the alligator when he was sweeping his torch over the water where you see the red eyes reflected in the night. Yes, this is also how you frog gig because my dad did it until he gigged a snake and then brought that in the boat. And that was the end of Jack's frog gigging. It was fun for a minute, wasn't it? Till it gets dangerous. Then it's not funny anymore because you can see red eyes, but you don't know what they are. Now an alligator's eyes are probably bigger, but a snake and frog, mm, pretty similar. When you see the red eyes reflecting in the night, one looks so particularly big, they approached it, but it managed to dive twice to evade them before they approached it real slow. The men cut their engine and honed in on their prey and Travis said he gripped his harpoon and took a shot. I chucked the spear at it. Then I realized it was a very large gator it had pulled our boat like we had the motor running. The men then had a terrifying two hour ride around the lake courtesy of the gator. Okay, I don't know if you can throw the harpoon gun in the water at that point. That would have been my choice. You know, this is kind of fun for a minute that this gator's pulled me around the lake 
and then it's just terrifying. Because if it goes under, under, we weren't, we weren't real sure how big he was when we spotted him. And to our surprise, after we harpooned it, it ended up being a giant. It dragged the boat around for about two hours before I was able to get a clean shot at it. Well, then the harpoon is tied to something. Just cut it. Having my dad and my brother there made it so much more special. I just sat back and listened to my dad tell stranger after stranger. I think he might be more excited than I am. After bringing the alligator ashore, the men used a forklift truck to pull the animal into the air for photos. The animal, which is nearly as long as the vehicle's extended mast, was dangled in the air by its neck with its tail brushing the floor. It's one of the largest ones ever caught in the history of the state's alligator. You should go online and look at the pictures of this thing. I mean, it's so prehistoric and it's so massive. It might be the largest ever taken in, in, in Arkansas, even back to the 19th century. And then somebody complained, why are they killing them? Well. You can eat them. Never had a gator stew? I have. Pretty good. Mm. Arkansas began issuing permits to hunt alligators in a 2008 in a bid to control numbers with a holder allowed to kill one alligator on public land on one of the eight nights in September. An alligator has to be killed first by snaring or harpooning it, then dispatch it, dispatching it with a shotgun or an underwater firearm. I didn't even know there were underwater firearms. It's a whole different level of redneck that I don't live at, but who knows? You never know. I could get there. You lake or an ocean person? Paddles? Lake or ocean? Lake. Lake. Yeah, me too. I can do more on a lake. All I think of is if I drive a boat on the ocean, I just think of Jaws. And no matter how big my boat is, I think I'm going to need a bigger boat because now I believe in Megalodon. What am I supposed to do? Get Tiger Woods' is, uh privacy giant yacht just to fish no i just don't understand the ocean because i didn't we didn't grow up on it and it just seems i like to look at it maybe put my foot in it but you can't have a peaceful cocktail in the ocean but you can in the lake i can fish in the lake i can drive all my i can drive a bass boat i can drive a regular boat i always know in a lake if the boat sinks i can probably swim to shore because i can see land the whole time what if your boat gets sucked out in a riptide in the ocean? It's happened. People never are seen again. So that's that. Now, this next subject, boy, did I do some work for you guys. Boy, oh boy, did I take something hard. I didn't make it harder. And I barely made it any easier. I, this whole time, and this isn't even politics, this is, and I did watch the debate, and all I'm gonna say on that is, if, if we know somebody's a loud mouth and on open mic night they go over their time by more than a minute, their mic is turned off. Now I've never seen it where we had to go get somebody except once in Denver, and they had to go get the guy off stage, and it was, <laughs> it was not pretty, but boy was it worth the five bucks to get into open mic night to see a meltdown like that. So I'm just saying whether it would be Biden or Trumpy, maybe Trumpy a little more. If you can't shut up, we're gonna turn the mic off. Or I thought it'd be fun if we have paintball guns, the whole crowd. And then every time you go long, the colors start flying and it doesn't stop. And have you ever been hit by a paintball gun? I have, and it hurts like shit. It left like um, indentations and bruises on me. I mean, I played with uh, Rocky Lepore at this communion. Somewhere we were on the road somewhere and an abandoned mall had been turned into an um, urban warfare paintball center, which was totally fun. But I didn't realize, and I was very bad at it, every time I, run around, all I turned around, all I heard was, hey kid, <laughs> and then you just hear me go, fuck, God. She wore the better pants. These jeans suck. Anyway, so I, I got off track there with the debate, but I looked up Q, QAnon. I don't even know how to say it, but I'm seeing these people everywhere. I remember two years ago in Lake of the Ozarks, my dad and I got out of a car in a parking lot and there were QAnon things stapled the telephone poles and he said what is that shit <laughs> he didn't even know what it is he, he just it could have been for you know uh, a place to get your hair cut but when you're the, his age you just assume it's shit what is that shit i said i don't know dad 
So we walked over there and it was all QAnon. I go, I don't really know what that is, but I know it's conspiracy things that are right wing. I do know that. So he started tearing them all down and off the poles and we had somewhere to go. And I'm like, dad, they're just gonna put them back up. Well, I don't feel good about myself unless you, you know, you gotta take part, you gotta do your part. I'm tearing this shit down. And he did, and I sat there and waited. I mean, I helped, I guess, but um, I still didn't even look it up. And then, I don't know, you're just seeing there's stuff everywhere and there's a lot of them at the Trump rallies that have t-shirts that just say Q and I just wanted to know what it was. And here's the problem. Google, if you just Google what is QAnon, holy shit. There's like 70 million things and they all look hard. Hard. The articles are 15,000 pages long. They springboard off into more crazy shit. So I did my best to dumb it down. And I kind of just went through it. This is a lot of papers. Don't, don't, don't freak out. Cause I'm, I ain't reading all of it. I mean, I tried. That's the thing, I couldn't even read it all. And I tried, so I just picked out. So you have a general idea of what's going on with the Q gang. And I guess QAnon is what they say. It is a far right conspiracy theory alleging that a Kabul of Satan worshiping pedophiles running a global child sex trafficking ring is plotting against President Donald Trump who is battling them. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, my first question would be, who were they, who, who were they plotting against before him? They just were created because of Donald? And they're like, you know what? We're going to go fuck with that star of Home Alone too. That's what we're going to do. Oh my God. Plotting against President Donald Trump, who is battling them, leading to a quote, day of reckoning involving mass arrest of journalists and politicians. No part of this theory is based on fact. Well, then we definitely should keep going with it. If it's just horse shit. This is Wikipedia, too. Although preceded by similar viral conspiracies such as Pizzagate, that's where I think they thought Hillary Clinton had ch children in a pizza parlor somewhere in the East Coast, and then some guy went to rescue them, and there's not even a basement, more or less. There's no children. The theory began with a popular 2017, so this all started around 2017, post on the anonymous image board 4chan. I don't even know what an image board is. And I know Facebook, and I, ah, by the way, I'm on TikTok. Did you see my banjo dance? You should go on TikTok. I mean, I know all this shit, but I don't know. What's an image board? 4chan by Q, who is presumably an American individual, but, but likely has become a group of people Q claimed to have access to classified information involving the Trump administration and its opponents in the United States. NBC News that found that three people who took the original Q post and expanded it across multiple media platforms to build internet followings for profit. Q was preceded by several similar anonymous 4chan posters such as, listen to this shit, FBI-A-N-N, H-L-I-N-N, High level insider, CIA, and then, I mean, it goes on and on and on. I outline stuff, but I'm just gonna go. Uh, we don't, you don't even need to know that. That's just, it's just, it's a lot of, of I'm just trying to get to what they believe. Um, uh, they think that these um, Satan worshiping pedophiles uh, control everything. They control politicians and they control the media. They control Hollywood and they cover up their existence essentially. And they, here's the thing. I lived in Hollywood. I never saw a child. Did they keep them all in their house? <laughs> the children are in the valley. If you know anything about LA, which I didn't really like living in at all, which is why I left there. Um, there's no children. You don't, you forget they exist. There's also no old people. Well, some older people at Nate and Al's Deli for breakfast. Larry King. Think Larry King. Anyway, so I don't know what they're talking about. Um, and they would now be controlling, they would be ruling the world if it were not for the election of Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump in this conspiracy theory knows all about the evil Kabul's wrongdoing. But one of the reasons Donald Trump was elected to put an end to them, basically, that's why he was elected. And now we'd be ignorant of this behind the scenes battle 
of Donald Trump and the U.S. military that everyone backs him and the evil Kabul were not it for Q. And what Q is, is basically a poster on 4chan, who later moved to 8chan, who reveals details about the secret behind the scenes battle and also secrets about what the Kabul is doing and also the mass sort of upcoming arrest with, through these posts. They believe there's an imminent event known as the storm in which thousands of people, members of the Kabul, will be arrested, possibly sent to Guantanamo Bay prison or face military, tribal, tr military tribunals. And the U.S. military will brutally take over the country. Oh, my God. You have to drink. You have to drink. Yeah. Oh, shit. This should have had Jameson today. This is so hard. Here's the thing. When you see these people interviewed, I don't believe they've read all this because I can't read it. And when I see them interviewed, I do think I'm a little smarter than them. Not by a lot, but enough. When they're like, I just want... Everything be the way it was. Okay, well, I don't even know what that means to that man, but I know he didn't read all this shit. There's no way. The result of the storm will be salvation and utopia on earth. Oh my God. Origin and spread, and then it goes into 4chan. It all started in 2017, and the storm. Knock on that. And the, I mean, look at all this. I can't even. <laughs> Here's some good ones. Here's some of their claims. And sometimes they say some of our claims are just flat, fat, flat ass wrong, and we're sorry about that, but they keep putting them out there anyway. Uh, they claim that U.S. Representative and former DNC Chairman Debbie Washington Schultz hired a Salvadorian gang, a member of MS-13, to murder DNC staffer Seth Rich. They, on March 18th, uh, March 1st, 2018, they had a suggestion that German Chancellor Angela Merkel is Adolf Hitler's granddaughter. <laughs> I can't, I mean, you know, even if she was, you know, Rudolf Hess's kids are out there. Eichmann's kids are out there. People had, he did, just stop. I mean, this is each mass, each mass shooting is a false flag attack organized by the Kabul. Am I even saying that right? Kabul? Kabul? I don't know. Coven. I'll call it a coven. That's easier. Um, oh, Hillary, George Soros, and other people are planning a coup and are involved in an international child sex trafficking ring. It just goes on. And the identity of Q. See, I wanted to know who Q is. Who's the dude? And it kind of goes back to some guy named Jim Watkins. But more, <laughs> I'm serious. I don't, it's too hard to fucking read all this. Like, there's no way. Like, the people with the Q shirts on at the Trump rally, they made their shirts. They took spray paint, purple spray paint, and they put a Q on it on a white Hanes t-shirt. I mean, <sighs> Who is Q? We say upgraded to Haynes. Yeah, well, Haynes is nice. Yeah, are they tankless? Uh, I no, they're not tankless. They're real. They have sleeves. No, tagless. Oh, tagless? I I didn't go to the Trump yeah. rally. I don't know. I've just seen them on television. <laughs> Who is Q? In late October 2017, an anonymous an anonymous user posted on 4chan, a shadowy site. See, I don't even know what 4chan is. An image board. I've never even heard of that. Um, a shadowy site known for, among other things, cruel hoaxes and political extremism. Under the title of the column before the storm, the poster claimed to have high-level government security clearance, Q, clearance to be exact, and referred to Donald Trump, Clinton, but 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 Obama too. He gives the readers breadcrumbs so they can ferret details out on their own. See, I don't see the people that I saw doing that. How would you have time when you're chain smoking to sit inside and ferret out details? Anyone who tries to debunk Q is a clown. Like Taylor the man, da, 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 da. they believe the mainstream media is lying to them. All of it, not just CNN, everybody. <sighs> that didn't really, then, then there's just a thing. What does this have to do with Roseanne Barr? What? 
This is what I'm talking about. You can't even get through their sites without it being whacked out. The actress has tweeted about Q and retweeted posts from the QAnon account. 2017, she tweeted, who is Q? Well, I don't see anything wrong with that because I, I want to know too. And I don't know who Q is and reportedly asked Q to direct message her. <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe Q liked the Roseanne show. Maybe he thought she's funny. Her stand-up's still funny, as far as I'm concerned. Um, in May, Barr posted a racist tweet about former White House advisor, yeah, who figures, in, oh, should this lady, that Valerie Jarrett, she said something racist, but I don't remember that. And then she figures into some of the QAnon theories. Oh my God. There's, there, th this is the one thing I want you to see, though. Okay, this, this, this took hours of me reading, going, it doesn't even make sense. Um, a consensus of leading researchers and critics who study and debunk Q QAnon disinformation told ABC News that a key to identifying Q has been hiding in plain sight for years on a pig farm south of Manila in the Philippines, at least until recently. So then, he's not gonna tell me in the next, now it's all about what they believe in, and, um, oh, they believe that some of the Hollywood stars are eating babies. Huh. Which is weird because I used to do a joke in my act when uh, Bill Cosby got busted. My mom goes, don't you think it's pe terrible those people are still going to his shows? I go, well, mom, they're old. Maybe they didn't hear what he's been accused of. Maybe they heard it and they don't care. Because let me tell you what, if I bought a ticket to see Stevie Nicks and then I heard Stevie Nicks ate a baby, I'd be like, well, I'm sorry to hear about that for that baby, but I gotta hear a landslide, bitches. And I bought a ticket. And maybe she ate the baby before, after I bought the ticket. So that doesn't make me bad. It's just an accusation. Baby eating Hollywood stars. Oh. And then Trumpy was retweeting some of their stuff, but wait, I'm gonna get to where the guy, okay. Who is Q? This is a good answer. This, is, this took hours to find, though. Two Americans most clearly associated with the authors of thousands of cube drops dating back to 2017 are James Watkins, 56, who gained control in 2017, 2015 of the controversial anonymous message board 8chan, and his son, Ronnie Watkins, former 8chan administrator and the current administrator of its successor, the Watkins-owned 8kun, 8kun. Since 2001, Watkins has been living in the Philippines, according to the Philippines immigration records. He, if, if he's not Q, he can find out how Q is at any time, said Frederick Brennan, the creator of HN and Watkins' former business partner, and he's pretty much the only person in the world that can have private contact with Q. He's the only person that through the board, that the board of Q started on 8chan can send Q a DM and get into private contact with basically the leader of this political cult that everyone wants to hear from right now. Brennan created 8chan in 2013 when he was living in New York City after dreaming up the idea during a trip on psychedelic mushrooms. He moved to Manila in 2014 to work with James, uh, James and Ronnie Watkins. And in 2015, he cut a deal that overturned Overship to the site to the Elder Watkins. He worked, ba ba ba. These two um, yahoos, the Watkinses, they've denied being Q. Um, uh, but then he was brought up on, and before, I think the Senate. Let me see. See what I mean? This is, ugh, this is exhausting. I'm gonna to get to the end of where, why they went there. Because Z was taken. No, because they were getting in trouble and the government was coming down on them and they were gonna get prosecuted for some of this shit. And um, here we go. This is where it is. Ultimately, an arrest warrant was issued for Brennan, fo forcing him to flee the country, leaving his Filipino wife behind. And then, it, it, so he was in the Philippines. How do these people know about this? Is it on their facial book? Does it come up? It's never come up on any of my stuff. That's just, these are just pages and pages and pages of these. There's just basically two crazy, just so crazy people did mushrooms and created this thing. And even if all those things were true, right? 
let's say there's a satanic cult and they're eating babies or, I don't know, sex rings. What they should be eating is pipe, pipe and spice Twinkies. Um, why would you think that Donald Trump, this can't have just been going on two years. It's too well organized, correct? Correct. All right, well, there's, that's the best I can do. And I gave it my all on that. I read a ton, but at least we know what it is now. And now when you see the shirt, or the, sometimes they just hold up the thing and I'm like, come on now, you're holding up letters. Okay, moving on. That was just kind of an educational thing. Wasn't that funny? But it'll be funny later now that we know what we're talking about because I don't even know what I'm talking about. I told you guys to watch The Vow. Are you watching The Vow? It's on net, no, it's on H HBO. It's about a cult. It's not, and again, it's not like I go looking for cults. They just keep popping up. And this one's modern. This one's so, we talked about it a little bit, I know, but, and, and it's not over, and I'm watching episodes, and I'm not gonna tell you anything to, quote, ruin it, because it's already in the news every day, and then I think, well, you guys probably heard about it anyway. So just this past week, <clears throat> well, I'm not gonna tell you, just, I'm gonna tell you about this woman, and then I'm gonna tell you what has happened in the last week, which is amazing. Claire Bronfman, it is an American heiress and leader of Nexium. So if you're watching The Vow, Claire, she's one of the higher uppers, a multi-level marketing company and cult based near Albany, New York. She's the youngest daughter of billionaire, philan I never can say this, philanthropist, and former Seagram Liquor Chairman, Edgar Bronfman Sr. After a brief equestrian career, haven't we all? I did have a pony when I was 10. I named her Princess, a little Shetland pony. Rich people, this kills me because it's always rich people's kids that are in the equestrian, the equestrian, the, all that, you know, just rich people taking a horse and jumping shit. Um, Bronfman, she got involved in this Nexium, a business engaged in criminal activities during 1998 to 2017, which led uh, to indictments on federal charges, including sex trafficking. She pleaded guilty to conspiracy to conceal and harbor illegal aliens for financial gain. I haven't seen that part of the, the show yet. What, where, what, what? <sighs> illegal people? I thought everybody was pretty on the up and up. To fraudulent use of identification, the prosecution re requested a five year stint, uh, five years in prison in September 2020. So it was just last week. She was sentenced to six years and nine months in federal prison. Imagine that. She won't have to do it all. My dad always says figure half. So three years, but you were, you're were you the Seagram's lady. Your dad is the Seagram's, here's her background. She's the daughter of Canadian billionaire, Edgar Bromfin Sr. and Rita Rev, the daughter of an English pub owner from Essex, England. They met in Spain, blah, blah, blah. They remarried. Um, they're the Seagram's people. She could have just drank free Seagram's forever. Why do you need to go join a cult? What are you doing? Sit home with your billion dollars. She did compete in the Mill Street Indoor International Horror Show. In 2001, she won the Grand Prix at the CSIA Endeavour. What the fuck? She placed seventh in the world final Samsung National Junior Jumping Series. I think that means her horse jump, not her. Be funny if it was just people though. Through her sister Clara, so her sister got involved in this cult too. They became in Nexium's personal advance program called Executive Success Program, ESP Workshops. The sisters have committed, became committed followers and financial backers of Nexium founder who? Keith. We talked about Keith. Yeah. I can never say his name right. Rainier. We'll call him Rainier. Um, then they moved up there and then they gave them all, they gave him tons of money to sue everybody when people started leaving. So they got in trouble for that because you can't just harass people for no good goddamn reason and it's all fake lawsuits. And um, so anyway, 
six years and nine months in a prison by in prison by a federal judge. In addition, she was fined five hundred thousand dollars in order to pay restitution victim to restitution to victim Jane Doe twelve in the amount of ninety six thousand. So after you see what these, this lady's money did to people, ruin their lives, ninety six grand ain't enough. I need ninety six grand and free Seagrams for life. I'll sign off on that. Even though I don't I don't really love Seagrams, but if it's free, I love it. There you go. Um, I have more information on her because this is just last week. She's the heir to the Seagram's liquor fortune. <sighs> After she was sentenced, she, she touched her throat as if she was struggling to swallow. Oh no, I had to be in prison. This is terrible. She became Carmen. She's the first one to be sentenced in the Nexium investigation, which has shattered the sunny facade of an organization that purported to help people achieve their personal goals through executive success workshops. Its leader, Keith, was convicted in June of 2018 of racketeering, sex trafficking, fraud, and other crimes. Yeah, there's so many crimes going on here. Um, but it's good that they got her. Miss Brumfman, some of the victims said, sued them relentlessly, she did. Drove them into bankruptcy, even pers persuaded local prosecutors to initiate criminal charges against them. She was just an asshole. Anyway, so she's going to prison, which is great. And then I looked up Keith, because I didn't really, all I told you guys that I'm not joining a cult. I know that they didn't know it was a cult in the beginning, but we talked about that part last week, but Keith, I looked up a little bit more on Keith. Do you know there's a rapper named Chief Keef? I know, because I had some shows that I was doing before him in a venue, and they told me, um, don't go long, because Chief Keef's coming. And then I said, who's Chief Keef? And they go, well, he's a rapper guy. So I looked him up. And then he didn't show up that night. And they said, you can do as long as you want and let the show go long if you want, because Chief Keef... His manager, I said, where's Chief Keef? Not that I even care because I don't even know Chief Keef, but I was interested. <laughs> Lego, his manager said they can't find him. And I thought, boy, you are out of lies as a manager when you just say, fuck it, I can't find him. There are a million other things you could have said that are more acceptable even as bullshit lines. Oh, he's sick. Oh, he has explosive diarrhea. He can't go anywhere. Million things you could have said. You are so done with your client when you tell a stranger at a venue, I can't fucking find him. You've just had it. Anyway, that was a side story about Chief Keefe. That was in Tucson. He was supposed to come in. I was interested to see too, and I had nothing to do that night. I was gonna stay and watch. Womp womp. No show. So Keefe, Chief Keefe here, Rainier is scheduled to be sentenced on October 27th, 2020. He, may, he, he, he faces a mandatory minimum prison term of 15 years and a possible life sentence. This guy should get life, not 15 years. His early life and career, blah, blah, blah. But this is how the guy starts. This is where I don't understand if you're gonna give somebody a lot of money. Like I've given a little bit of money to people I didn't research. I've done stupid things. I've given money to comedians as loans, and I don't really know what they're doing, you know? Are you doing drugs with that? I don't fucking know. But you know what, here's, I hear, here's 200 bucks. I, I get that, but when we're talking about investing your life and moving to Albany and all this shit, you gotta Google the guy, and it's all Googleable. You know, there was no way to Google Jim Jones. They didn't, we didn't have it back then, but now we do. Through the 80s, he was involved in Amway. <coughs> Red flag. <sighs> he was fascinated by Amway Scientology and neuro-linguistic programming. He also did work as a computer programmer for New York State Division of Par Par Parole. Then, by the 90s, he founded his own multi-level marketing company, Consumers Byline Inc. It was at CBI at a CBI pitched pitch that Keith met Tony Nat Natali who subsequently became a top seller for the organization and then her with her then along with her then husband her and her son moved to be closer to him her marriage ended shortly thereafter then they dated for 8 years this place in 1993 was shut down after being investigated by 
20 states. That year, New York filed a lawsuit, and they proved that the organization was a pyramid scheme. Okay, this is all Googleable. This guy is a con man. This shit isn't in the show. That's why I don't feel like I'm blowing it for you guys. I'm just adding to your experience. He signed a consent order bar permanently barring him from promoting, offering, or granting participation in a change distribution scheme and ordering him to pay a $40,000 fine. Then he created the Health National Network, a multi-level seller of vitamins. <sighs> I just, I understand that people can be susceptible and I feel bad that their lives were ruined, but even I would go, and I'm pretty lenient on myself about doing shit. Lazy would be another way to say that, but I think the first way I said it sounded better, right? I'm very lenient with myself and I am the CEO of my own organization and I don't even have uh, meetings with myself. I give myself a lot of time off. <laughs> the president of my corporation. Um, so then he forms this thing that, that, that the vow is about, and it goes completely off the rails. And But I just thought there was, you know, I was reading all this stuff. Somehow her money, the Seagram chick's money, Sarah and the sister, somehow they tricked the Dalai Lama to come and get on stage and take a picture. And then I thought... Really, Dalai Lama? Because they dropped you two mil? Can, can anybody do that? You didn't research this guy? Weird. Thought, I thought I had respect for him. It's a little off the beaten path for him. And then, um, you know, you got to watch the rest of it. I don't want to blow it for you. But then there was homicide speculation, too. A member of um, Rainier's alleged lovers, a number of Rainier's alleged lovers suffered untimely deaths. Gina Hutchinson was found dead in a number in a, of a gunshot wound to the head. Christian Snyder disappeared and was last seen at a Nexium event. Living girlfriends Barbara Jeske and Pam Kifritz both died of cancer. Well, you can't say he did that. Rainier partnered with Christian Keefe. Oh, she survived cervical cancer. He was filming, he was claiming in 2009, and he said, I've had a lot of people killed before my be because of my be beliefs. Um, and then I guess Unsolved Mysteries did a thing about it because they were, uh, 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 you know, kind of leaning to the fact that maybe he killed people. We haven't gotten to that in the documentary. So we only have one thing left, and I'll tell you what, termites. Um, this isn't my best mystery, and I'll tell you the truth. It's because I was golfing and drinking a lot with my friend Ron for my birthday week, which I called Maddie Gras, because he calls me Maddie. Not many people do. Can't say I was in love with it when I first heard it, but for Maddie again, I'll take it. And uh, it was Maddie Gras all week, and we golfed. We went somewhere fancy, because Ron is way more famous than me, and he can make calls and I can't, I just pay. Anyway, so, but I did, this is because, oh, and by the way, can we talk about the Titans having COVID just for a second and fucking up the whole fantasy league that I'm in that's terrible anyway? Lewis Black is beating me by like four points. My friend Kathy took all saints and she, she doesn't understand that's not the idea of fantasy football. My friend Dory thought it was over on Saturday. I mean, this is not a highbrow league. And I had Tannehill. I didn't even want Tannehill, but I ended up getting him because I didn't understand the app. Nobody did. And then it just started assigning us people. And we're like, what the fuck's going on? But none of us knew what to do. So we just said, let it do it. And then you got who you got. <sighs> yeah. People, somebody has Derrick Henry. They're screwed. Yeah. But anyway, I found this one because one of my, one of my favorite places on earth um, is Kiowa Island in South Carolina, but I really love New Orleans the most, and I really love Louisiana. And this came up because I was looking at New Orleans to maybe just drive down there and see what was going on. And uh, it's the most uh, supposedly, or as my friend in L.A. would mispronounce it every time, supposedly, and he also said Valentine's Day. And then I would call his work partner and go, supposedly, it's Valentine's Day. And then I would just hang up and I would do it all year long. 
just to make myself laugh, supposedly. Anyway, this is supposedly the most haunted plantation in the United States. Now, 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 I'm sure a lot of them say that because when you see the word plantation, you can imagine how many bad things happened there that weren't pleasant for at least half the people living in the, in, on the property, I'm gonna say. I'm sure the slaves didn't think of these places as good times. Here we go. This is if you're ever driving down to New Orleans, it's in St. Francis, Francisville, Louisiana. Former Antebellum Plantation, St. Francisville, Louisiana. Built in 1796 by General David Bradford, it is touted as one of America's most haunted home, homes. There are also a variety of legends surrounding the Myrtles. The house is reputedly built over an Indian burial ground and the ghost of a Native American woman has been reported. But isn't everything an Indian burial ground? Seriously. I mean, they were here, they were everywhere. I mean, I guess specifically, but kind of everywhere. Um, it was built in 1796, and then they tell you how big it is. It's pretty huge. You can go look at the pictures of it. It's got 22 rooms spread over two floors, but this is what they say. The plantation house is rumored to be on top of an ancient tunica, tunica what? Like tunica, where the casinos are. Tunica Indian Burial Ground, it, 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 is, it is currently a bed and breakfast and offers historical and mystery tours. Now, would you stay? Hmm? 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 If it's haunted? I wouldn't stay because it's a bed and breakfast. <coughs> because here's the thing. I don't really want breakfast. So half of what you're selling, I'm like, meh. Rather have a late lunch. And I don't know. I always think the people sometimes who run those things are just too nosy. Too conversational. Where are you coming in from? Who cares? And I'm friendly at the bar, but I don't know. They're a little too hands-on-y for me. It's currently a bed and breakfast of a bar, touted as one of the most, it's supposedly the home elite's 12 ghosts. It is often reported that 10 murders occurred in the house. We're not even talking about what happened to the slaves. We just glossed over that. But historical records only indicate the uh, murder of William Winter. William Drew Winter is also a very popular character in the plantation. He was an attorney who lived at the plantation from 1865. So after, um, you know, until 1871, he was shot by a stranger. After being shot, he staggered inside the house and died trying to climb the stairs. He died on the 17th step of the stairs to, to present day visitors while employees in the hotel st still hear his dying footsteps. In 2002, Unsolved Mysteries filled a segment about the alleged hauntings at the, at the plantation, Acor according to host Robert Stack. Remember him? He was great. But I also like that guy on, um, oh shit, where he makes, they write, the writing is so weird. What is that one? It's not. It's not on some issues where he's like, St. Louis, the muddy Mississippi, where beer flows and murder rules. <gasps> I love that guy. I love that guy. It's a kid robot. Anyway, I did like Robert Stack, too. The production crew experienced technical difficulties during the production of the segment. They've also been featured on Ghost Hunters. The TV series Ghost Adventures also filled an episode. The television series Most Terrifying Places in America profiled the plantation. Well, see, that's not another thing I want to do on vacation. I don't want to be terrified. That doesn't sound like fun, now does it? No, it doesn't. Now, here's the thing. I did a little more homework. If you Google haunted pictures from the plantation, there's a few that are pretty convincing. But... I can't be like my parents and believe what I see, right? Maybe it's photoshopped, but some of them, I don't know how you would do that. But once again, I don't know enough about all that. I'm just gonna believe it's haunted because bad shit happened there a lot, I'm sure. And you know, just because you have nice drapes and good china, what? Paddles? Paper, yeah. That's, that's a lot of paper. I do a lot, I do a lot of work for everybody. I mean, I look a lot of shit up because I'm curious. This is what I would do if I was off. I would just go, huh, well, who are these cute people? And then halfway through, my brain would explode, and I'd probably open something stronger than wine, paddles. This wasn't enough for the cue. And I know it was hard, but we got through it as a team. And now at least you have some reference to what the hell it is. It's a satanic 
they think Satanists are eating and having sex with children. And Donald Trump is going to put an end to it, assuming he has time for all that with an election and things happening. So that's it, termites. That's it for episode nine. Fall is here. Baseball's kind of winding up. What else? It's really all I got for you. Um, if you listen to Storytime on my YouTube channel, there's going to be a message from the Grand Termite because he was here. It was pretty exciting. And he does it really good. He really put his acting chops into it. It was great. Here he is right here. That's the Grand Termite when he's not being the termite. That's just when he's trying to be funny. Um, I still don't know when there's any going to be any work to, had, to be had out there. Very sorry all the airline people are losing their jobs. I had a lot of friends that are flight attendants that I've met. Some of them on Delta. I fly so much on Delta, they already know what I want to drink. How's that for cool? I hope they uh, get a bailout so they can all go back to work and we can all go back to work. Wouldn't that be fun to fly again? Fly some. I know you can, but if I don't have to, I'm not going to. I'd rather drive, and I can drive just about anywhere. So, all right, termites. I want you to have a good week. I want you to have fun. Get yourself some Twinkies. Cereal, it's on the floor. There you go, East Coast people. You all love Dunkin' Donuts so much. This goddamn cereal from Dunkin' Donuts now. I'm surprised Starbucks doesn't have cereal. Can you imagine? I'll have the seven pump, no sugar. Not too hot. Don't make the foam too hot. I could work at Starbucks literally for about one customer. And then they'd tell me their whole order and I'd go, yeah, nope, ain't doing it. And I'd, I'll give you coffee. I have decaf. <laughs> it's not even coffee anymore. That's just fake syrups and cream. What's that, foam? Anyway, I'm rambling. So, all right. That's it, you guys. Subscribe. Tell your buddies. Tell your pals. Make new termite friends. Be a good termite. And we'll see you here next week when the bar is open for what? Episode 10.